Section 1.9, line angle structural formulas. So we talked about several different ways of representing in two dimensions these three-dimensional organic chemicals. The expanded structural formula and the condensed and the skeletal. And now we're going to talk about another one called the line angle structural formula. And as the name implies, this uses lines at angles to represent a chemical molecule. So each of these lines, like here, here is a ball and stick model for propane. Remember propane, mom eats pickled, one, two, three. It's three carbons, it's an alkane, and so they're all single bonds. This carbon will have three hydrogens on it, this one will have two, this one will also have three. Because every carbon needs to have four bonds. The nice thing about organic chemistry is there's a lot of just straightforward, this is always how it is things. So this is the, the, the uh, ball and stick model. In the line angle structural formula, we use a line to represent a carbon-carbon bond. So at the end of this line is one carbon, and at the, end of the at the other end of that line is another carbon. And here's another carbon-carbon bond. Both of these bonds are to this same carbon at the point. Drawing these things um, with the line angles is very fast, especially when you get things that are large and complicated. The line angle formulas are a lot easier. They are a little harder to get used to and recognize what am I looking at here. And so it's going to take a little bit of practice. Um, another nice thing about them is um, you're kind of forced to make wiggles in them, like here's octane and it's this zigzag, and that actually somewhat resembles what octane looks like when it's stretched out. So here we look at pentane, and if we make pentane as straight as possible, there's four, four bonds around each carbon, and if you remember from Vesper theory in general chemistry, four bonds around this carbon atom are going to form a tetrahedral structure. So you're never going to have these carbons in that carbon chain actually be in a straight line. They're going to be bent like this. And so the line angle formula for pentane sort of reflects that zigzag nature of that carbon chain. So here's one carbon and another and another. In fact, let's just draw on this. So look, I don't even know what color I've got up here. Red is fine. So this could this is a carbon and this is a carbon and this is a carbon and that one and that one. So it's like taking that skeletal structure where we just looked at the carbons and simplifying it a little bit further and just making lines. So then we have to understand that at the end of each line is a carbon atom and it's got however many hydrogens it needs to fulfill its octet. Any questions? So we can also look at branched chain alkanes. So this is a, an unbranched chain for hexane. There's six carbons. And when you have to remember to count the end. It's not the number of lines equals the number of carbons. It's the end. So one, two, three, four, five, six. When I draw these, I actually count like this. If I was going to draw hexane, when I put my pen down, I would say one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe I should try that again. One, two, three, four, five, six. You have to remember to count the starting point. So in a branch chain, like this guy here, this is a branch chain alkane. Here this is pentane with five carbons in the longest chain and then there's this methyl group. So this line, there's a carbon at this end, there's a carbon at that end. It's not attached to any other carbon, so it must have three hydrogens on it. So here's our methyl group. The methyl group is on the second carbon, and so this one has the name 2-methylpentane. This is butane. It's got four carbons in the longest chain, and there are two methyl groups on the second carbon. So 2,2-dimethylbutane. 
This is very similar to 2-methylpentane, but now the methyl group is moved over here. Could we have a 4-methylpentane? No. Why not? We'd be, counting from the wrong end. We'd be counting from the wrong end. Because 4-methylpentane and 2-methylpentane are really the same molecule. It's just if you call it 4-methylpentane, you count it from the wrong end. And an ethyl. Okay, so let's let's take um, this this guy right here and make it into two. Ooh, well, let's see. We can't do that. Let's put an ethyl on this guy. So an ethyl would attach, and there's one carbon. That's the methyl, and then we have to bend the line so that there's a carbon here and a carbon here. Ethyl is two carbons. You have to be careful when you're sticking an ethyl on, because if I just if I stick an ethyl on to this guy, it's not 2-ethylpentane anymore. It, it wouldn't be 2-ethylpentane. Because the ethyl group would actually be part of the longest chain. So we we if we're counting this way, we're gonna get five. If we start here, one, two, three, four, five. Six. So, you know, I, I have to really watch out for this when I make up examples on the fly because I was going to say, oh, well, let's just change that into two ethyl pentane. Oh, we can't do that. Because if we make that methyl into an ethyl, what would be the name of that compound that I drew? This guy right here. We just decided that that's actually six carbons in this longest chain, right? So that would be hexane. It would be a hexane. And um, let's change colors here. Let's do green. So our long chain is here. That's our chain. And we could number from either end. Let's try this end. One, two, three, four, five, six. Our substituent is this, which is what? Methyl, right? So we've got a methyl substituent. If I number it that way, it's on the third carbon, right? 3-methyl. And so then we also have to check the other way. That would be 1, 2, 3, 4. It would give us 4, so 3 is better. So that would be 3-methylhexane. We tried to just change a methyl group into an ethyl group, but we end up completely changing the name. So this is the sort of stuff that appeals to a certain subgroup of the population. Some people think this is fun. It's sort of a weird puzzle game sort of thing. And I hope that all of you can at least come to a point where you maybe see how someone could think it's fun, even if you don't personally think it's fun. Any questions? So this is a, um, a figure from your textbook that I think gives a really nice summary of what all these different representations are. So if you get confused about what the question's asking you for, um, what kind of formula that was, you can look back and refer to this. So at the top they're showing us the different ways of representing organic molecules three-dimensionally. Okay, We don't usually ask you to draw things like this but the book will use them to illustrate and so we need to be able to you know take that in and understand what those pictures are um, you will be asked to draw these these are considered formulas and these are the two-dimensional representations of the three-dimensional molecules we we teach you all of them because they are useful in different situations okay the line angle structural formula which we just learned about very fast and easy, but if you've got a question where it's asking you to count the number of hydrogens, it might be a little challenging. And so 
in that situation, it might be better to draw an expanded structural formula. In the homework, I, I haven't looked at it all super carefully. They may ask you to write the condensed structural formula. And you're like, oh, shoot, I wrote the expanded structural formula. On an exam, I am not going to intentionally try to trick you to see, well, do they know what the names of those different formulas are? Okay, I'm going to use the names of the formulas, and I'd like you to learn them. Well, what did she mean by an expanded structural formula? Or what's a line angle? But I'm not on an exam going to ask you to draw the line angle structure for a compound, and then if you do the expanded or the condensed, count it wrong. Okay, so I'm not going to try to trick you with that, but I want you to understand what these things are.